Good morning. Welcome back here to Papua New Guinea. My name is Ryan. Today we are heading out to Denungit, a 398 meter long runway with the 10% slope, so that's about 1300 feet. You actually land on a 1% down slope, so it's kind of shaped like a banana. Pretty awesome place, let me tell you. This morning I thought I'd go through something a little bit different. Um, I'd actually walk you through what I do to get ready for the day, get my plane ready, get my iPad ready, how we basically, yeah, the whole procedure of getting out of here on a 35 minute flight out to Denungit, where I might be getting some coffee, dropping some dangerous good stuff off, picking one person up and heading back. So let's get ready. So first thing, I need to take off all of the covers, things like that. Then I gotta do my walk around while those guys are weighing up my cargo. I'm gonna be go ahead and load it up for me. I don't really need all my seats today, so I think I'm gonna actually be taking a lot of my seats out in case I have coffee to pick up. That just takes up a bunch of weight that I could be using for coffee. So on my iPad every morning, what I gotta do is open up the Flight Span app, which is the app that we use to do all of our flight planning, our fuel planning, our billing, everything. So it's really nice. We just started using it um, maybe a year ago when I was back in the States. But after I've opened it up, first thing I do is check to see the flight schedule status. It's green, but I'm gonna hit on it and then refresh it just to make sure that it matches what is on the computers here for my loading, things like that. The next tab over here at the top, nav, that's where I'm going to be filling out my fuel, what I want to go out there and back, depending on what the weather is today. Um, I can just set my minimum fuel at 480, which means I land back here at 480, which means I can get out of here with 780 kgs of cargo, but I only have just a couple of items to do anyway. The next tab over is weight and balance. We'll get to that in just a minute. I'm waiting for basically my manifest to show me how much cargo I have on board, but I can at least get my seats ready. What I have, I basically just got these two seats. I think I have two passengers out there as well. Let's go ahead and do my walk around until I get my manifest things like that. Oh, also we can hit the little button up here. Um, the little yellow circle thing. We'll sync that here. That's going to update any charts or notams or things like that that we need for where we're going, places like that. It's done. What we can do is look on the arrival tab here and it will show me if I have any notams up here at the top for Denunga, but we don't. So, figured we might as well just go over the weather right now. We use the Windy app here in Papua New Guinea. I've shown you guys before. Uh, it's nothing special. I'm not sponsored by it. It's just what we use because we don't really have any other way to get weather forecast or anything that's even going on right now. So if we zoom in here at 7, it's 7.25 in the morning now. It's just showing a bunch of blue with a bunch of yellow behind us up in those mountains. The blue usually just means like a lot of clouds everywhere and that's kind of the case it looks like here. A lot of low clouds on all the mountains. We do have a little bit of fog out here right now. Moving forward, we're going to be getting out of here by 8. So let's just move on up to, let's say, 9 in the morning out here to Denungit, which is just about three minutes from Yawan. If you guys have seen any of those videos, I've been going out there a lot. Um, out there, it looks like the blue is all over Yawan, but not Denungit. So I'm guessing usually the valley is pretty wide open because it's a really wide valley. But let's go ahead and look at low clouds out there. There is definitely some potential low clouds out there. Like I said, though, we can call them cloud bases, 5,000 or above, so that's all right. And we can look at the satellite as well. Doesn't look like there's any rain, and on the satellite itself, it shows it fairly open. So that's making me think that if there is some low clouds, they're just on maybe the ridges and things like that. So Hook and Tide is going to be taking out all my seats. They're going to be taking out six of my seats. I'm going to leave two. I think I have two passengers. And then I'm gonna leave one just in case I have somebody to pick up out there. Maybe someone is sick or something that's just unexpected. It's always good to have an extra seat or two actually a lot of times. So as I'm walking around the plane, things that I'm checking for really are safety concerns. I'm not doing a hundred hour inspection. I know a lot of pilots do a hundred hour inspection on their walk around in the morning. I'm making sure I have full control movements. They're going stop to stop. There's been no damage since the last time the airplane has been flown. Um, all my cables, things like that are on. Nothing's been broken, nothing's been dented. Checking my tire condition here. 
make sure I don't have like a gash or something like that in it or a nail or the tire pressure is looking low. Making sure my flaps go down nice and smoothly, don't have any flap fails, things like that. Checking my oil. Basically, just making sure that the condition of the airplane is in the condition that I actually wanted in before I head out. They're just about done filling up Brad's plane. He's got a bigger day than I do, so he's getting out of here before I am. After they're done there, they're gonna come here. I need to check my fuel though, see how much I have, and uh, determine what I want to take with me. I think I'm just gonna take my FR reserve. Not that I really need to, but I'm pretty much coming out of there empty. I don't think I'm getting coffee today, but we'll see. Brad is just getting out of here now. I'm just about finishing up with everything. It's about five minutes till eight now. I wanna be taking off at 8.15, wheels off the ground, so I need to be starting by 8.05. I don't have any passengers, which is nice. So he's gonna be taking off out of here. I think all I have to do is my interior check, and then I'm out of here. It is 8.10 on the dot. Let's go ahead and get started to get out of here. Wheel is on. Everything is where I want it. We're gonna go do low start. Oil pressure comes in a little bit thicker, so it goes up a little bit higher. As the day goes on, it doesn't kind of come in quite as high just because it's a little bit thinner. NG coming up at a normal rate. Over 35%, I'm looking at my ITT. It's gonna come up probably 630, 628. Then remove the battery pack first. Before I flip on my generator and alternator. I'll spike up a little bit. Once they start coming down, I'll flip on my alternator. It'll do the same thing. Once it starts coming down, I'll flip on my aux bus, which does all my environmental, like air blowers, things like that in here. Up forward, and we'll get an 850 for our fuel before I forget. Get some. All right, our fuel, our caps, and our selectors are all good. Our controls are good. Our TAWs will leave enabled for now, just because we'll be doing I have our departure out of here this morning, but I imagine I'll be able to stay VFR. I see enough holes out there. So we'll change this over here up to 11,000. We'll come back at 10,000. Our weight and balance, I put in 97 down here in the front pod. I do have a little bit back here, but it's so little I don't care. And then depart, we've got one person, 850 in the fuel and flight level 11,000. So we do not have radar on this airplane, only our Zulu does. So let's head back over here, our weight and balance. Our empty weight today is 4310. 4310 is already in there. And our cargo is 210. 214, but 210 on here. So 5580, 5580 on the dot. So those both match. We'll throw our flight plan in here, Garoka to Nungit. Got our, got our trim set up. Karoka Tower, good morning. November Tango Kilo request. Taxi, Dinungit, 1 POB. November Tango Kilo, Karoka Tower, morning through taxi to runway 17 left under back track lineup. Wind is light and variable QNH 1019. Time check 1.0. Clear to back track lineup 17 left 1019 or November Tango Kilo. Clear left and right. Get our strobes on as we get onto the runway. Yeah. I guarantee you I can stay VFR out of here. I say that, we'll see. <laughs> it looks broken enough. I think a few years ago when I started flying here, I would have looked at this and been like, oh my goodness, there's no way I can get out of here VFR. No way. But the more you see the clouds every day and study them every day, as I do, kind of see trends and you can see okay there's a little bit lighter here the clouds are a little further away out there so I think I can maybe go around this one and it looks like that one's back further enough so I can anyway okay now taking a look at it from here yeah, I am seeing still some holes out there here and there but just in case we'll just throw our instrument departure in, so I have it in there, just in case I have to use it. It's easy to get rid of it, so igniter's on, lights are on, bypass, 
We'll do high idle and we'll just kind of go beta just to warm up the oil temp just a little bit more. Up and harness, harness, high idle, governor check. We did not do governor check, so I will do that right before we take off. November Tango Kilo ready for departure. November Tango Kilo runway 17 left, left turn clear for takeoff. 17 left, left turn clear for takeoff. No, November Tango Kilo. All right, let's do our governor speed check and then let's go. All right, that's it. 1390. Rotate 56. Work is set. Airspeed's alive. There's over 50 continuing. There's rotate already. Okay. Let's just bring this on up to 740. Pitch for 73, which is about 12 to 12 degrees, usually on the attitude indicator. It's going to be my best angle of climb. Best amount of altitude in the shortest amount of distance. If I want to get over a cloud, that's what I'm pitching for. Oh, it's so close. I could turn a little bit. I'm just going to scrape the top of it. Uh, it's the barely top. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and nose on over, make a left-hand turn just so we can stay VFR. It's going to make my life a little bit easier because I don't have to go way out there and around. And... Hey, we're going up to 11,000. There's 10 degrees of flaps. Over 90 to zero. Pop on back to 2,000 RPM. You have to make your job fun somehow, right? <laughs> The Bennett Gap is not going to work. does not look like it. The clouds are going all the way to the ground from what I can tell. We're going to just pitch for 99 knots, best rate of climb. That's going to give us the most amount of altitude and, and the least amount of time. I think I can outclimb these. And I mean, it's so like scattered. I'll just be, kind of be able to work my way through this layer right here. And then it looks like there's another high layer way high above that. But once I get over this one, I'm imagining I'll be able to see some mountaintops over there. Back over here to flight span. Right up here, it tells me when I'm going to be landing, 848. So I told them 850. So, so far, working out pretty good. Truck tower, November Tango Kilo, departed time 1-9-er. We'll be tracking a 089 on climb 11000. Estimating the Nungit time 47, and we'll remain OCTA. November Tango Kilo, on climb 11000. And what five miles contact Mosby? be? One, two, three, decimal liner, HF 8861. No contact 5565. One, two, three, nine, eight, eight, six, one, five, five, six, five, one, five, nine, 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 zero, per kilo. Then November 10 kilo request. Yeah, go ahead. He wants the weather. <laughs> November 10 kilo request and appreciation of weather on your trek out. Not great. Uh, there's quite a few. Uh, Scattered to broken layers starting at uh, 500 feet all the way up to probably over 11,000 feet. Um, no definite layers, it's just kind of broken clouds everywhere. I can't really see any ridges, but it looks like the bin is open. Over by that damn fellow. Thanks, much appreciated. Right. My only option right now to stay VFR is to head out here. You can see a tiny little hole out here. I'd have to go all the way up to my 12,800 feet, I think, or 12,6 to get out of this valley um, IFR. It's looking clear on the other side of these mountains right here, so that's why I'm heading out here. I could do that, but then I have to go up higher, and then I have to ask for different clearance. Once I go through Nads of airspace, I have to get clearance. So that's why I don't want to do that. I'd much rather just stay the VFR. makes my life a lot easier, less calling people. But we're heading straight for the Bennett Gap at this point. It looks pretty good, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to move myself way over here to the left so I have an out. If I get up there and I'm like, oh, I just don't feel comfortable with this, I can make a quick exit out of here. And if I need to, I can also slow down, but it's looking like it's kind of clearing as I'm getting a little bit closer. But I'm going to turn my taws off for the time being so I don't get yelled at as I come through here. Bring our torque on back down to 12.50 and do our cleanup after takeoff. Turn our Q 
QNH down to 1009 or about 10 less than the airport, because that's probably what it's going to take. Let's get out here for just the area QNH. If you're wondering, how are you considering this VFR? Well, VFR rules, they have a little bit of a different here in PNG, where if the terrain is rising over 5,000 feet, you have to be clear of clouds and inside of the surface at all times. So I'm inside of the surface right now, right over there. I've got a nice clear ahead of me. I'm clear of clouds, and the mountains are well over 5,000 feet. So that's how I'm considering myself VFR with PNG regulations. Look at that, it's just absolutely perfect on the other side of this, these clouds. Now we're out of the Garoka Valley, at least clear of the cloudiness. I'll have to make sure that I text Hudson to get our flight coordinator to get a weather report before I head back this way. I do have my FR reserve, so I can always just head on down to Medang, which I can see is beautiful. I can see all the way down there, so. That's my go-to. If you'd like to recreate some of these flights, I've got a lot of these flights on my Patreon page under the commercial tier. And if you'd like to get into Flight Simulator, learn how to fly the Kodiak, if you've never flown before, or if you have, if you've done Flight Sim, but you want to learn how to fly a Kodiak and G1000 and a turbine, things like that, I've got a Flight Simulator course that I know you guys would really enjoy. There's a link down below. I run sales on it all the time, so. I want you guys to be able to enjoy flying here in Papua New Guinea like I do. Orsb 123.9, November Tango, Kilo Transfer. Orsb 8861, November Tango, Kilo Transfer. November Tango, Kilo, this small ticket. Good morning, November Tango, Kilo, and enjoy 1239er. Through the Bennett Gap, passing 900,000 on climb 1, 1,000. Estimating the Nugget time 4, 7, and we'll remain OCTA, NADZAP. Um, thank you, Leo. Mostly copy, not above 1, 1,000 OCTA. And now we've got traffic, Kilo, 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 That chime lets me know I'm 200 feet just below my desired altitude of 11,000. So I better get my autopilot on, it will go ahead and level me off. From this point, I'm basically just trying to stay out of this area. This little bit last triangle right here is the only portion of ADZAP's airspace that I am not going to be going in. So I'm just going to cut the corner. That's why I'm kind of just paralleling my track over here, I'm hoping to cut the corner and then just drop in from there. Just looking ahead, it looks like the clouds are kind of at my level, so maybe a little bit higher. So either I have to go up to maybe 13,000 just to get over top of it and then crazy drop down to 5,000, but we'll see once we get up here. Before I get up to these clouds up here where my workload might be going up, let's go over the strip chart together. Hit arrival up here, make sure that it says denungit. It's 4,900 feet, touchdown elevation, 1% slope going downhill, and then it'll go up into an uphill. You can see down here the, the profile of it. And then the max slope looks like 11% at the top of the hill. Come on down here, you guys can see just a picture of what it looks like. Doesn't really show really kind of the hills and things, but it's a beautiful valley. Very grassy, very wide open. The circuit, I'm going to be flying basically overhead. It's a really huge circuit. I don't think all of our other pilots maybe fly it exactly like I do. I just fly a huge extended one so that I can fly directly over it. And I'm usually about 1,500 feet over the field and then just kind of really slowly work my way all the way down. Uh, turning final 5,400. That's a fairly far out um, committed area. And what I mean by committed is from that point on, regardless of what the cameras are showing and looking like. It looks like there's a lot of room. There's a big mountain on this side and a big mountain on this side. And once I get past, usually I think it's about a half a mile in or so, then I'm going to be committed to land because I just don't have enough power and maneuverability to get out of there safely. I'll be checking my winds, specifically usually quartering tailwinds in there to see what it is. They texted me, they showed me a picture earlier, which I forgot to tell you guys. They did send me a picture 
uh, about an hour ago of what it looked like. It was clearing. Should be no issues getting in there. And at that point, there was no wind as well. So yeah, committed is 5,300 early final. Oh, before we get out there, I want to show you guys this. This is my coffee table album. If you guys have not seen this, I've shared with you guys before in a couple other videos, but let me just see if I can find Denungit in here. There we go, Denungit. So this is a really cool book. I spent a lot of time on it for you guys to show all the places that we go to. And I've got some history about either when the place was built. I think that's what I did with this, is why this airstrip was built, when it was built, how they built it. Some of the places just maybe about the culture, about the place, something unique about the people or what they do, how they get their money, things like that. So a bunch of drone photos, a bunch of other just photos in there. If you haven't, pick one of these up. It's a really good conversation piece, I'm sure, with friends that are involved in aviation or just to have at the hangar. So I'm not really seeing any of the mountaintops over here. I'm just seeing barely one tiny ridge over there, which is at 13,500. I've got clouds ahead of me. I'm not seeing any of the ridges that I need to get into. Uh, I'm guessing that I might actually have to climb up a bit because as I'm getting closer, I'm seeing less and less of the sky above. You can see there's this like kind of wispy cloud above and then all these clouds. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the distance between those two clouds and as I get closer, if it starts closing off, that means I'm below the clouds. If it starts getting bigger as I'm getting there, that means I'm above the clouds and I'm going to be able to clear it. Great way is also is if you're coming up to a mountain, if you haven't done any mountain flying, if you're seeing less and less of the other side as you get closer, you're not going to make it. But if you're seeing more and more, that's, that's the cue that you're higher than the mountain. I can't really tell. It looks like it's just kind of remaining the same as I'm getting closer. But considering that it's all the way up to there, I'm thinking I'll have to climb. I might as well at least go up to 12. Mars V8861, November Tango Kilo. November Tango Kilo, Mars again. November Tango Kilo, on climb, not above 13,000, will remain OCTA, NASA. November Tango Kilo, on climb, not above 13,000, will remain OCTA, NASA. November Tango Kilo, on climb, not above 13,000, will remain OCTA, NASA. November Tango Kilo, on climb, not above 13,000, will remain OCTA, NASA that gap is now getting bigger and bigger. I'm only at 11.3, so I'm guessing maybe 11.5. We'll stop at 11.5. Like I said, I gotta go all the way down to 6,300 for my circuit altitude entering into it. And the less I have to descend, the easier it is for me. I'm at 11.5 now. It looks like I'll be able to squeeze over the top of it. Maybe climb up another couple hundred feet right at the end as it gets really close to the to the mountain ridge. Uh, maybe not. You guys can see there's a little bit of a sliver of a hole right there and I'm seeing down into the valley. At this point, it's not big enough for me to want to go down that way because I'm seeing it's like a pretty hard line right above and then like a nice dark blue behind. So I'm thinking once I get past this, once I get into this big valley here, into the Denungit area, it's just going to open really wide open and I can just go down really fast. If I throw my terrain on, you can see there's some mountains here and some mountains over there. And then starting right here, over to here is kind of a low spot. So I'm thinking once I get right up here to the edge of this cloud, it's just, yeah, I've already lost that little sliver down there. So that's why you don't just dive bomb for little slivers. Um, once I get over top of this, then we'll just go on down. So I'm going to set my altitude down to 6,300 feet for the altitude that I'm going to need to get basically 1,500 feet over the field. And then we'll work our way down and around. So we need to get my approach speed for here. I head over to the aux page. We're 5,400 foot, 5,400 pounds landing. So 63 knots down here. But I could also head over here and hit a landing performance. There we go. 63 knots. So it shows it right there. So yeah, 63 knots on either one of those. So we're going to come on down for V ref 63 knots. All right, this last cloud looks like we'll be able to just to squeak over top of it, barely. We'll autopilot off though. A prop forward. 
preparation for going down. We'll start even pulling our power because I'm now just starting to see some ridges over there. Last cloud and just like I thought, down we go. Our fuel selectors on, our TAWS train awareness system off. Our VREF, we've set up our inlet and our lights. If we have to go around, we talked about it earlier, but 5,300 feet, um, kind of a early final. We'll check the winds. Pretty strong ones up here at 10 knots. Not that strong, but for New Guinea, it's strong. And hopefully, I don't have 10 knots down there, but I don't think I should. If we have to go around, it's power up 20 degrees of flaps. Pitch for 12 degrees on the attitude indicator. Reset our ITT, our correction, yeah, our ITT to the top of the green with a hard right turn out. Up and harness. We'll do harness last because I'm going to be needing to move around a little bit. There we go. And now down we go. So I'm basically lining up that cyan mark right on top of Denunga, and that will get me at my 6,300 feet when I get to Denunga. It looks like it's going to take about 1,600 feet per minute on the descent. It looks like I'm going to have to circle around, climb up to 12,000 to get back out of this valley. If you guys want to see the return trip back to Garoka, uh, stay to the end. I'll do a time lapse. Zip back there in a couple of minutes. Morsby 8861, November Tango Kilo. November Tango Kilo, Morsby good. November Tango Kilo in the circuit, Denunga cancel SAR. November Tango Kilo, Denunga SAR terminated. November Tango Kilo. And if you're wondering, why are you canceling SAR this time, but then other times you don't? Well, we've got people on the ground out here that have internet connection that could call back if I had an accident or something like that. So that's why I'm canceling it now. Also, I know that once I get down further below these mountains, this place in particular is hard to get a hold of Moresby. All right, well, I've, this must be the transition level right here because it's really bumpy. I had nine knots over here. It's going this way. We'll see how the winds change. It looks like it's kind of turning around a little bit like this. Kind of hoping that it's just dead on the ground though because coming in with a tailwind into a short, uh, 1,300 foot per runway. Landing downhill a little bit uh, poses some challenges. All stations, Denunget, 1239 in November, Tango Kilo in the circuit, Denunget. So I'm gonna aim for the basically the threshold on this one, just because it kind of drops off and then it also down slopes. Aim for the threshold, I'm just gonna go all the way, basically point my nose to it the second it goes underneath my nose. I'm gonna go idle, flaps up. That way I just start slowly sinking. I'm 500. Not gonna, I'm not gonna flare. I'm just gonna kind of hold my position and just kind of let the airplane settle onto the ground. It's a little bit different than landing uphill or even flat. 10 degrees of flaps. There's 6,300 over this ridge. 12 knots of wind here, so it's gonna get pretty bumpy on the other side of these hills. 5,900 feet, basically a beam, my numbers on downwind. Turning downwind now. 14 knots, 18 knots behind me now. It was dead down there, so I'm not sure where, now I've got 20 knots in this direction. I'm wondering where all this wind is going to go <laughs> down there, unless it just completely just drops off. There's my 5,900 feet. We're just coming up almost a beam now, so we're going to add a little bit of power. We'll go 20 degrees of flaps. Grab into the wind a little bit. Got 21 knots now, crosswind. Throw me around a little bit, I think, too. 5,400 turning final. All right, now the wind's dropping off. All right, so I don't see the runway at all, but that's why I set up my OBS, so I can have a visual picture of the orientation of the runway at all times. And my base, still got 12 knots of crosswind. So again, if I have to go around, it's power up. 20 degrees, right hand turn out, reset ITT, hard right turn out. Prop and harness is done, flaps to go. 
don't see the runway. There's our 83 knots, is our correction. We're going down to 73 knots. I need to slow on down. There's 5,400 for final, so I'm a little bit low. But I'm going to hold my altitude now. 15 knots right here of crosswind. I really hope it drops off. Hold my altitude so I'm not getting low. All right, now I see the runway. Just about ready to turn final. There's full flaps. Checklist is complete. All right, now I'm seeing the windsock moving around. Turn final. Slowing to 63. Okay, winds are dropping off 10 knots. 8 knots, 7 knots. 6 knots crosswind. 650 on the descent, a little bit fast. 4 knots crosswind. I found I committed. Five knots crosswind, three knots headwind. Insock showing nothing. Six knots crosswind, four knots headwind, I'm committed. Five hundred. Five hundred on the descent. Seven knots crosswind. Well, the winds dropped down to about one knot of headwind, short, short final, so no dramas there. This is always an exciting place. Like I said, if you want to see the trip back up to Garoka, stay tuned. I'm going to do a quick time lapse back there, and we'll see how we can work the weather to get back there. <laughs> 